I'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar on the newest addition to the REACH US product of families, the B8. I'm Kim Robbins, Senior Marketing Manager at BTX, and I'll be your host throughout the session. Steve Valente, President of FM Valente, has been in the streaming video market for over 20 years and recently founded REACH US to bring new technologies in lecture capture and streaming to the AV market sector. Steve is going to go through both a presentation and a product demonstration of the B8, which is an all-in-one network streaming and recording appliance. If you have any questions, please type them to me as they arise. We'll be taking breaks throughout the session so Steve can elaborate or, or clarify. Now, just a little bit about BTX. When you work with BTX, you work with a team of people whose mission it is to take you beyond distribution and be your partner of choice. In addition to supplying many thousands of the finest interface, integration, and system products, we also engineer our own unique and patented solutions. We have deep technical expertise on all of the solutions that we provide, and our applications engineers, inside and outside sales teams, are readily available to help you specify, purchase, and then support your, product, your project requirements. Our full product line card offers thousands of products to make implementation of your projects run smoothly. Among the key integration building blocks that we provide are custom cable assemblies, custom plates and panels, video extenders, signal distribution, and cable management. With that being said, I'm going to pass this over to Steve so he can take us through and show us the power of B8. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that introduction, and uh, welcome everybody. My name is Stephen Valenti, and uh, I'm president of Reach US, and we're based out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show my screen, and I'm expecting that everyone should be able to see the uh, first shot of our PowerPoint. It tells a little bit about what our goals are with Reach, which are to capture, encode, stream record and make all that content available on demand. Is that all visible to everybody, Kim? I can see it. OK. Um, you can find us on our website, which is www.reach-us.net. And today we're going to focus on one of Reach's many products. It's our newest entry to the product mix. Uh, Reach has been around for about 13 years and serves over 30 countries worldwide um, and has over 300 employees worldwide, um, 120 of which are in engineering. And uh, the newest product to come to market is the B8. And the B8 is a entry level uh, recording device and streaming device that we just introduced and actually showed it for the first time at Infocom. but uh, launched it uh, in full release uh, around November time frame, uh, along with its brother product, the uh, B7. But we're going to focus today on the B8. Um, first, I thought I'd start off by talking a, a minute about just lecture capture and streaming. Um, Reach obviously builds a, a number of different solutions for a wide variety of applications. Um, and we're a lecture capture. This is a traditional slide from um, one of our older products that uh, just kind of shows a, a great idea of the concept of lecture capture where uh, you can have many different sources going into one device and having that device make it available to other locations, that same content, both audio and video, uh, with multiple views to many different participants on the local area network or the wide area network if it's set up properly. One huge advantage to Reach uh, being a, such a global player, um, they have no annual fees, which really separates us from most of our competition. They don't have to rely upon software development only for their um, income. They actually manufacture a lot of hardware and software and get involved with quite a bit of development um, and customized projects as well. So. Um, a big differentiator when you start to get into, especially the educational platform, uh, where sometimes annual budgets can be 
uh, hard to come by after the grant money has been discovered. Um, the fact that we have no annual fees or subscriptions, annual subscriptions, is a huge advantage for us. REACH, as I mentioned before, manufactures a, a whole host of different solutions and, and, and products. And one of the benefits for REACH in general is the fact that we are tying a lot of these products together as one coherent family. Um, there are quite a few other products that are not listed on this slide. Uh, and I'll refer back to the slide. But as you see here, the media center, that's kind of a, down in the, the middle portion on the left side, ends up being the glue that ties a lot of things together. And this is a newer development. Um, this is something that we've been working very hard to make one sort of integration package work with our uh, products developed, like the B7 for the education marketplace, uh, specifically uh, classrooms. The Media Master, which gets used a lot in medical applications and certain education as a standalone product. Our VCR, which is our video conferencing recorder, which is designed to work with other people's Polycom and Tamburg and Life Size and their MCUs and bring that and record that, as well as our older traditional MRS system, which is um, more of a distributed architecture with encoders uh, around a facility. Uh, streaming into a, a server, and that all gets captured into our media center. So what we're focusing on today is the B8, which is a simple product designed to um, be used in, as a standalone application or participate in an enterprise environment uh, with the addition of the media center. The front panel of the unit has its own LCD screen, has audio level meters. It also has front panel controls, which give you, you can start, stop recording, um, control your playback, also pause recording. It also gives you the, a full complement of inputs on the back panel of the B8. You have three DVI inputs which are designed for capturing two 1080p signals and one VGA. And it also has a loop out for a local monitor, as well as a VGA output on it for a decoded signal for a local monitor as well, separate from the other looping monitor. The um, product can support and, and push out to that LCD monitor up to 1080p resolution and also has an optional uh, B8 has an optional remote controlled uh, panel that you can buy as a separate accessory um, that's RS45 controlled or it can also be controlled from other products like AMX Crestron or, or HRS or any of those type of players. This product here, the B8, was designed as an MPEG-4, uh, using a MPEG-4 uh, transport. And the benefit of that is portability. Uh, unlike the rest of our product line, which has been focused around multi-streaming, and I'll touch on that a little bit later, but MPEG-4 is by far the most portable format for any um, videos or a combination of videos to be transported around as a single file. It makes it available, widely available across uh, a multitude of, of applications, whether it be into pumping up into you know, reflector clouds and CDNs or uh, having it available to play back on uh, a wide range of devices, meaning PCs, Macs, iPads, etc. This here shows the three inputs going into the B8. The control panel that we mentioned before is an option. Another nice feature about this product, it does have a feature, a front USB port. And we'll talk a little bit more about that port. But the key feature here is this unit, unlike other products on the marketplace that are out there so far, has an internal hard drive as well as the USB drive on the front and records to one or the other or both simultaneously. 
the front panel knob control gives you full controls of all the different products that are, I mean, I'm sorry, files that are being recorded. So you can jog and shuttle through some of the different files and then play them out on the local monitor that has the decoder output. And then it also has, obviously, the Ethernet port that allows it to talk and converse and handle streams going out to iPads or other devices downstream on your network. Steve? Yep. Do you think I could interrupt with a couple of questions? Absolutely. OK. Are there any plans for a digital video loop out instead of a v instead of VGA? Um, well, this is obviously the, the first of our uh, small format standalone products. And I, I think feedback like that's invaluable. Uh, actually, one of the product managers is going to be traveling around the country uh, this week and next week uh, looking for, for that type of feedback. So I'm assuming they're looking for uh, an HDMI output or something like that. Uh, or a DVI output, and right now in the current state, the, the board that's built into the unit does not support it, but uh, I know there's already been discussions about the next generation of product, and um, we've been pretty quick to come to market with different suggestions from customers. So at this point, the unit is not, but uh, in the near future, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised a next generation unit being shown at Infocom, possibly, or thereafter, um, it might be worth taking a peek at. So what is the size of the internal hard drive? Uh, it ships with a standard one terabyte hard drive. And the idea is that it also uh, will give you um, FTP capability of pushing that storage off to other devices on the network, such as network attached storage and whatnot. Great, great. Do you know how much, uh, if you had to guess, how many lectures that would be or you know, time recorded? Yeah, we've calculated with um, four to six hours of recording um, per weekday. Uh, that would last about a semester and a half, um, obviously at the highest resolution. Um, if you were going to do you know, more than that recording, then it might only get you down to one semester before you want to offload those to uh, an online storage device, or it can simultaneously offload to those uh, network-attached storage devices and and uh, LMSs as well through our media center. So we haven't really touched on the media center, but uh, the media center is our collective uh, sort of centralized management utility, that, and that can have an infinite amount of storage on it. OK. And what's the speed of the hard drive? That I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look into that, and, and I'll, I'll try to get an answer to you. Um, yeah, that that I don't have. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, so uh, thank you, Steve. No problem. Carry on. So basically, with the um, MPEG-4 file, it's one stream. It's easy. It's very portable. Um, you know, this unit is designed to be a, a, a low-cost standalone unit at a at a list price of uh, fifty-three hundred dollars. Um, and you know the resolution of the unit on the output can be set and configured internally. And then we have several different streams that the one unit can put out, up to five streams. Um, and those five streams can be consisted of picture-in-picture -picture or side-by-side -side, uh, or a single image if you wanted. Um, and it allows for you to manipulate what you want as a standalone device. Now keep in mind the media center adds a lot more versatility to the system because then we can have literally hundreds of, of people uh, seeing that slide and are seeing that those images real time or video on demand. So uh, as a standalone device, this is kind of a unique product because it, it also uh, not only does it record and record to the USB hard drive, I mean the hard drive and the USB drive, but it also is sending out five RTSP streams simultaneously. There's also an iPad app that's available online at the iTunes store. That's the first of our apps. It's called the uh, Reach Video app. So if you just look at the iTunes store and download the free Reach Video app, that gives you access through an iPad to control 
and preview any of the videos live um, using one of those five RTSP streams. And you log into the unit and you see an image like this on your iPad and you have full control down here of PTZ settings and presets as well as real-time controls. So it's a low latency, uh, less than half a second. Um, so you can actually functionally control the PTZs right there. Um, you can set the bandwidth streams that you want to, uh, bit rates of the streams that you want to set that at. You can start and stop recording right from the iPad app, as well as manipulate the layout up here in the top right. There's a um, little icon when you click on that, it brings up the layout of side-by-side uh, -side or um, allows you to rotate through which of these screens are going to be the priority screen, the largest screen of them all. There's also a product that's um, called the Beekeeper Lite. This is an admin tool that allows you to remotely manage and look into the classroom, so to speak, and preview and verify that all the cameras and settings are set up properly, um, manipulate the um, the PTZ and set it up and configure it for the, the teacher. Uh, so this is more of an admin console designed to um, just make sure everything's working and test the status of the classroom as well as look for any sort of alarms and it can, it can tell you if there's a device failure or anything like that. It'll pop up and alert the administrator that you have a problem or the network connectivity is down or anything like that. And here's a larger, kind of more holistic look at the um, the B8 working in an environment with multiple rooms. Um, we have the ability here of taking any one of these rooms and having one, two, or three inputs and or a control panel, um, feeding information upstream to the media center. Um, there is also a, a free version of Media Center Lite, and I'll show you a quick uh, preview of that um, during this presentation. Uh, and the Media Center Lite um, actually gives you full management capability and allows you to manage uh, hundreds of locations, um, but it has a limit, a software limit of only 30 users to be logged into the free version. Okay, It does run on a Linux server, and we'll, we'll go into some more details later on that. And we can either provide the server or allow that to run on a virtualized uh, server over on your college campus environment. <clears throat> the benefit of bringing in Media Center allows you then to do v, uh, VOD with HTML5. It actually transcodes everything into an HTML5 format, making it very portable for a wide variety of iPads and droids and any sort of a Samsung Galaxy tablet, uh, suddenly now we have the ability to play back video on demand on any of those devices through our media center. And I'll show you a screenshot right here, but also take you to a live um, a version of this where we've redesigned the media center itself so that it looks more like a uh, YouTube type experience, uh, very modern. Uh, it actually flashes through some of these uh, screens and shows you some of the latest things uploaded to it as a full utility for administration rights and control of who can log into and who cannot log into the to the media center. And then um, on the back end has uh, LDAP um, integration so that it can control who has access rights to what videos and that are posted up there and, and who has permission to post them or who has to have them pre-approved to be posted. Any question, Kim, that I need to slow down for? Steve, it looks like we're all, we're all set. Thank you. Okay. The Media Center itself, uh, just Take a couple slides to touch on this. Um, gives you a customizable web page. Um, allows for hosting all your files 
as I mentioned before, it gives you a full management tool for who can log in, who can see it, and there's a demo site that's permanently uh, posted up at e.svreach.com. And if you go to that website, you'll see a, a live media center. Um, uh, actually, right now it's hosted up on the Amazon uh, cloud, and um, that gives a good example of videos that are that are posted up there by some of our partners around the world. Um, and there's more being developed around that to to push everything to a, a cloud-based solution. But right now, this is just a um, a demo site where you can still see the full-blown media center that someone might have hosted on a university server or, or virtualized system on their campus. Oh, another nice feature is that the media center gives you the ability to do some light editing on the um, files after the fact. So if you've recorded a class and there's a 15-minute break, you can cut that down and, and remove that break either on ends or in the middle of the, um, the file itself. So there's some capability of also putting in uh, some extra PowerPoint slides as well as some things like that that you might want to insert into a, uh, a, um, an event. Um, keep in mind that uh, that would then break into the audio section so we'd have to make sure you uh, had an interruption and then posted an image for a new slide being entered. Okay. It does keep track of all that. <clears throat> kind of talking about the media center again. The media center then becomes our glue to tie into other LMS or content management solutions, be it Blackboard, which is the most popular in the United States, as well as Moodle. And there's others that we're working on currently. Um, so the Media Center allows us to, to tie the B8s and, and bring them all back into a centralized storage and allow students and lecturers and administrators all to participate on the system. And remember, the B8 comes with our basic Media Center Lite for free. <clears throat> Here's a quick overview of the Media Center Lite itself. Uh, we have, you know, on that Linux server, we can have up to 30 users um, running live streaming or video on demand. Um, you know, the nice thing about Linux is it gives you a, a long-term approach, uh, not having to worry about um, the changes that might go on within a Microsoft environment, and allows them to have consistent development with their platform and control their platform. Uh, the Media Center itself comes in several different flavors, um, and these are available in either software-only packages, and we also have a list of hardware packages, software and hardware packages, preloaded and pre-bundled on our price sheets uh, to serve 10, 100, 500 users, and you can stitch together multiple nodes to, to get into thousands of users if you so need it. Steve? Yes? A question just came in. Is Canvas a supported LMS? Canvas at this point is not, but we do have actually our product manager um, has been having several conversations with them, and they have a uh, several layers of which, um, I should say several layers of integration which they will allow manufacturers to tie into and, and we actually have their SDK and have been toying with um, the engineering team ramping that into one of our next developed uh, CMS's. So it's not today, it's not shippable today, but it's something that we're already working on and is already in our engineering um, team's hands to get development. Uh, we we sh hope to learn actually a little bit more about that within our next uh, development meeting, which is happening in about three weeks. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> um, so again, going down to um, the B8 and the fact that it's an MPEG-4 device allows it to fit in a wide variety of applications. Um, we've had, had people from the 
hotel motel business who want to be able to host events uh, and then give them to the, the uh, clients on a thumb drive or host them on a centralized server. Uh, MPEG-4 really let, lends itself to that type of environment where any client with any sort of PC can have easy access to that video or that content. It's very portable. Um, other applications that we've bumped into have been obviously medical, medical teaching, legal. We've had uh, law schools use this in, in interview applications as well as mock trial applications. Uh, we've had churches uh, use it for overflow rooms and for recording and posting this up to um, uh, to servers that are available online, uh, as well as uh, one of our first cu uh, customers was a pharmaceutical company that was using it for training applications. Um, so the fact that we can also take and in the media center um, upload other formats into the media center has been a very powerful tool. So not only stuck taking our content created on a B8 or other products of ours, but you can also take other formats and other files that were recorded on other devices as long as they're in the MPEG-4 or WMV file, we can upload them and transcode them right onto the media center. Okay, And then the media center also allows for downloading. There's no special tools needed. You can just simply click on the download button, that's icon that's on the media center. Uh, next to a file, if you have the permissions to do so, it'll allow you to um, download that file and, and make it available or portable on your PC or thumb drive or anything. Hey Steve, yep. another question came in. So, um, is it, you know, when you have the 10 or 100, uh, is that the total limitation um, of simultaneous users or can as many users go on only 10 at a time? So when you when the way we license our system for the media center is with concurrent users. So you can have um, hundreds of parties, but how many? Uh, and it also has to do with the sizing and the bit rate of the servers and stuff like that too. Uh, when you get into the hardware platform, we've already calculated that out. If you're just loading it on someone else's existing hardware, then we'd, we'd want to discuss that. Um, but it's a limitation of how many concurrent users can simultaneously log into the system. So a, a, a 10, uh, an MCMS, I'm sorry, an MCS 10, which has a list price of only $2,100, um, that product there um, finds itself into a lot of try and buy type applications where a, a college or university or even some private schools have looked to buy a B8 and, or two and implement them without breaking the bank uh, and jumping into a much larger uh, application and that would support uh, 10 different users concurrently which is more than enough for people to do kind of a, a startup or a dry run with a, an app implementation of a learning management tool. I'm going to Here, switch gears. Good, I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm going to switch gears just a bit. Um, sure. This is kind of an interesting uh, question. I'm going to ask. So do you have any tools or provide Support. Of course, BTX would do this as well, but uh, when doing an install of a system, sometimes uh, there are questions that come in about network configuration, bandwidth issues, wireless stuff, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys, uh, I think I may have seen a tool or a document to kind of help with networky things that may come up when doing a B8 sure. installation? So we, we have, um, for all of our products, whether it's the, the more complex multi-streaming products or the, the MPEG-4 products, we have uh, charts. Um, actually, there's one stitched to the end of this PowerPoint presentation, um, which shows the bit rates for number of uh, hours stored on a, um, or what the bit rate is for any given uh, number of cameras on, a, on different settings of the streaming module. So um, there, there are plenty of tools that we have available for each and every product that we have that shows, will allow a dealer to, to custom tailor what the storage requirements would be on a network and what the overhead on a network should be expected um, based
based on the implementation. Now, there's a lot of varieties there. We some of our products also uh, support multicast, which then handles a very different um, utility. It, it runs as a very different utility on a network, and um, that that's we could have a separate discussion about. But um, you know, just want everybody to know that there's there's quite a few uh, products that we we manufacture, and each one of them has uh, some very good documentation on you know how to implement them, what's the best practices, and um, what's available for storage and bit rate calculations, and that what you should expect. Great. Thanks, Steve. OK. Um, Third-party integration. Um, these are some things we touched on earlier. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, OpenCast, uh, Canvas, are kind of the ones that are now on our latest uh, radar. Uh, there's a few others as well, um, but those are two of the most prominent ones that we've been hearing about and being asked frequently from uh, our integrators around the country. And you know, certainly we have our eyes set on developing around those as well as others. So if there are uh, others that we need to be made aware of, uh, I've got a gentleman right now at the, the NAB show that's looking into uh, other uh, integration packages that we should be talking to and partners that we want to uh, collaborate with. Uh, but certainly send me um, or through Kim uh, any recommendations of, of packages that you think we need to continue to look at and develop around. <clears throat> Here's a simple screenshot. If anyone's ever familiar with uh, Blackboard and their single, you know, um, Log on. That uh, was a screenshot that allows you to. Whoop, this thing auto forwarded on me. Sorry. <clears throat> the um, this shows you that where our product actually pumps, and the the Reach Media Center actually participates within the Blackboard uh, environment. So a student would then log into their Blackboard environment, and then it's a deep level integration. So um, they don't have to log into multiple systems to see video content, they can go right into their Blackboard system and our content is made available right within the Blackboard environment. And that's what I mean by integration with Moodle and other things. They're, they're not just doing a hyperlink, they're actually doing deep level integration. Here's a simple little calculator um, that shows bit rate and storage um, for the USB drives, um, kind of a helpful tool uh, as people are trying to plan out what they could put on a USB drive in the front um, and how long those should last for storage. <clears throat> and again, there's no special formatting that you have to do for the USB drive. It's pretty much a plug and play device. Um, allows you to record redundantly and I've heard of other devices that have had problems with this. Uh, the nice thing about ours is it's also backed up if you so choose on the internal hard drive of the B8 as well as on the thumb drive. Here I'm just going to touch on for two seconds a couple other things that are available. Um, you know, the other products that we have in the market um, serve up to four HD signals. These are some hot bullet points that we're uh, very proud of. The um, education, medical, and corporate environment. Um, there was a question at the beginning of the entire uh, presentation that came in about video conferencing and recording. We do make products for those. Um, this here is the VCR I mentioned earlier. Um, it's uh, just been released, uh, or I should say a new version has been released in December with SIP compatibility. Um, and this is designed to work with Cisco, LifeSize, Polycom, Huawei, and quite a few more. Um, I'm going to also now go into a live uh, view and show you a couple tools that are available out there. Um, here's our website. Uh, and if you click on the actual logo of the B8 on our splash page, uh, which was up there, it'll bring you to this 
tool that is <clears throat> available to everybody if you ever want to show a customer or quickly get a quick overview on the B8 and some of the, the bullet points. Certainly we can get to you um, the presentation I just was going through, but this is a nice utility tool that's available on the web to everybody, kind of giving you a quick overview. And if you click over here, it'll bring you into the specs of the B8. And as I click down here, it'll also bring you and give you a quick overview of different features of the B8. Showing the iPad capabilities, the selection capabilities, the ability to change the way that the layout is on the screens. Does a nice job pictorying that. And if I click on this, it will show you how. So it's a little bit interactive if you wanted to show a customer. Showing the back plane, all the inputs and outputs. And a quick overview. Here is actually a live B8. I've already logged in just for time's sake. Uh, we've got about three more minutes, and then we'll, we'll break for any uh, any questions, and then um, go over anything. But here's a a live B8 that's on our network. Kim, you're still able to see my laptop, correct? Sorry, I was muted, yeah. Okay. I seem to have something going on with my, my local area network that's plugged in here. So when I go into the splash screen of the B8, I can set up my recordings, uh, start and stop recording right from this web page. So this is just a very simple browser interface designed to allow someone to administrator or uh, to log in um, and very quickly switch the inputs uh, or go full screen with any of the inputs as to what's being recorded, set the bit rates, or you could very simply log in and, and look at the files that are available to download or delete or rename. You can search through them. There's a little search utility. You can also go in and you know decide what inputs you want to record, what audio settings. They've done a nice job with this where you have several inputs for audio and you can mix them um, and set up the streams as well as camera control. So even if you did not have an iPad there, you can do everything from this web browser interface. Okay. And there's a few more settings I can go through, but it's a very simple product to learn. Training on it is 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 really easy. Um, and then what I'd like to show you next is just what we talked about before is the media center. Um, this is actually a live media center that is available for all of you to look at at any time. Just go to e.szreach.com. It'll bring you right to the splash page. You'll see it has a very modern look to it. Uh, has some recommended videos or hot videos, HTML5 videos, which are available on any iPads or portable devices. <clears throat> Shows you rankings, which are the most popular ones that have been watched. New videos that have been recently posted. such as this one here, the introduction, the B8 introduction. It's been a popular video. And if you want to go in, you can click on any of these and, and start bringing back video. I'm not going to do it right now because it will look um, a little bit slow coming through the WebEx um, uh, environment. But if you go to it, look, play around with it live, you'll see that the videos come through very sharp, very clean, all in high def. And, um, now, some of these, just so everyone's aware of, were made on both B8s 
and some were made on some of our multi-streaming uh, technologies. And um, multi-streaming is a kind of a unique technology to a limited number of players that actually have um, developed on a TI chip um, the ability to manage this, the images after the fact uh, or while live recording <clears throat> so you can blow them up full screen. Um, the V8 does not do that. That's our simplest and lowest end product, um, but uh, it's a unique technology that you'll see on this media center as well if you click on some of these demos. So with that, we've hit uh, about 40 minutes, and um, I'd like to uh, ask if there's any other questions. Um, I'd be happy to entertain those. Um, my email address, should anybody need it or want to fire any questions after the fact that you might think of, is Steve V at reach-us.net. Again, Steve V at reach-us.net. Okay, great. We do have a couple of questions. And Steve, I'm just going to put up uh, some information. I'm going to just make myself the presenter again. Sure. So people can get our uh, show on the screen. So people can see. Uh, how to reach uh, BTX as well. Um, so, first question. Uh, can you do live switching of cameras and content during the recording? Yes. So, <clears throat> several ways to do that is either through the web interface or that beekeeper application I showed very briefly uh, or through the iPad. The iPad will actually switch the inputs around and allow you to display those and uh, determine whatever you're seeing is what you're recording though. So uh, when it gets compiled into that MPEG-4 file, um, uh, it's re if you're watching on, let's say, a live monitor or on a stream, um, that's what's going to be recorded for future playback and video on demand. But the short answer is yes, you can switch those and, and change the layout on the fly while you're recording live. Cool. Great. Thank you. Um, can you talk about the different screen layouts? You showed two, but are there more? And are the windows adjustable? <clears throat> um, there's actually uh, three. Uh, you have the, um, you can do three in a row, side by side, all equal size. There's the, um, the, the side by side with one large, you know, two smaller and one large. And then obviously you can pull up any single image up and take full screen if you wanted to record that way. Um, what was the second part of that question? Uh, that was, I think you basically answered it. So okay. there's no way, uh, you can't, you can't, they're pre-configured screen. Correct. They're pre-configured layouts. You cannot stretch them and size them like a, a window tile. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, are there plans for an Android control app like the iPad app? Great question. Um, well, iPad, um, till recently, had been by far the largest um, platform for, uh, for mobile devices. Uh, I think, actually, recently I was reading something where the, the Droid has surpassed that now. Um, and we are certainly uh, very interested in developing around that as well. Uh, but at this point today, um, and probably through the summer time frame, uh, the answer is no, that's, that's not being developed at this moment. But um, uh, I would say stay tuned for that. Obviously, there's going to be more to come. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Well, Steve, I want to thank you very, very much for working with uh, BTX today and showing uh, the B8 capabilities. It's a very, very cool product. Um, we'll be certainly showing it at Infocom for all of you who are venturing out to Las Vegas. Both REACH and BTX have booths there, so we hope that you will stop by to both of our booths. And any questions that we didn't get to, we'll make sure that we do. But uh, we're I, just about on the 45-minute mark. And uh, again, Steve, thank you very much. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for putting this on. And, and by all means, feel free to stop by our booths at the show. We look forward to meeting a lot of you. OK, great. Thank you.